What if I told you that there's a new drug that could help patients lose up to 25% of their body weight and potentially reverse some of the deepest drivers of aging at the same time? Sounds like science fiction, right? But it's not. It's retitrutide. This triple action hormone drug is generating serious buzz, and for good reason. It's not just another GLP-1. It's the first in a new class of therapies that may redefine how we treat obesity, diabetes, fatty liver disease, and maybe even delay aspects of biological aging. Today we're going deep. We'll explore what makes retitrutide so powerful, how it compares to other GLP-1 meds, its implications for longevity and healthy aging, and what this means for cost, access, and the future of metabolic medicine. So what's the big deal with retitrutide? So whereas other medications like semaglutide result in around 15% of weight loss or body weight loss, terzipatide is around 21%, with retitrutide it's 24.2%. This is from the Surmount 1 trial, and they found that the patients, again, on the highest doses of retitrutide lost an average of 24.2% of their total body weight in just 48 weeks. That's not just impressive, it's paradigm shifting. And to put that in perspective, most bariatric surgeries lead to around a 25 to 30% weight loss. So we're talking near surgical results from a once weekly injection. And the ripple effects, they're massive. Type two diabetes risk plummets, blood pressure and cholesterol improve, liver fat melts away, inflammation drops, and even cancer risk in some cases decreases. So it's not just about numbers on a scale, it's about turning back the clock on decades of metabolic wear and tear. So turning to the science, what makes retitrutide different? Let's break it down. Semaglutide is a GLP-1 receptor agonist. It slows gastric emptying, reduces appetite, and boosts insulin secretion. Terzipatide adds GIP, glucose-dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. It's another incretin hormone that amplifies the insulin response, may improve insulin sensitivity, and could enhance fat metabolism. And emerging evidence also suggests that GIP may influence appetite and food-related reward pathways in the brain. Retitrutide introduces a third hormone, glucagon. And to explain this better, let's use an analogy. So imagine your metabolism is a city under siege. GLP-1 is the medic. It calms the chaos, lowers hunger, stabilizes blood sugar. GIP is the technician. It fine tunes insulin function and optimizes energy use. Glucagon is the demolition expert. It burns through stored fat and helps to ramp up thermogenesis. Individually, they're good. Together, they're a superhero team tackling obesity from multiple angles. That's the synergy of retitrutide. And here's the kicker. Unlike some other agents, retitrutide appears to preserve lean muscle mass better than semaglutide. That's a big deal, especially for aging adults where sarcopenia is a real risk. To summarize, as far as efficacy, it has the highest weight loss of any GLP-1 agent to date. Mechanism, it's triple action with unique glucagon effects. Side effects still includes nausea, but appears manageable with slower dose ramping. Metabolic effects, insulin sensitivity improvements, better liver markers, and possible resting energy expenditure boost. Retitrutide doesn't just build on what came before, it rewrites the formula. Now let's be real for a second. I used to be one of those people who viewed GLP-1 agonists with a raised eyebrow. I've said things like, it's just a shortcut, or we're treating lifestyle diseases with lifelong meds again. And honestly, that skepticism wasn't unfounded. For years, these drugs offered modest benefits with some really gnarly side effects. But retitrutide and this whole new generation of incretin-based therapies have forced a reevaluation. Because when you zoom out and compare them to bariatric surgery, the so-called gold standard, the results are shockingly close. Similar weight loss, up to 25%, far fewer complications, and it's reversible. You just stop the medication. We're not chasing weight loss here. We're chasing better health span. And as of right now, this may be one of the most powerful tools we've ever had. Now let's shift gears and talk longevity. Because excess visceral fat doesn't just increase your pant size, it accelerates aging. We're talking chronic inflammation, mitochondrial dysfunction, and a higher risk of cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, and cancer risk. Retitrutide has shown early promise in improving insulin sensitivity, inflammatory markers, and liver fat. These aren't just cosmetic wins. They're deep hits against the core mechanisms of metabolic aging. And here's a key concept I think it's worth understanding, and that's the body weight set point. So your brain has a built-in thermostat for body fat. When you lose weight, it fights to bring it back by increasing your hunger and decreasing energy expenditure. But retitrutide may change that. Some early data suggests it can shift the set point itself, not just override it. This could explain why weight loss with these agents is more sustainable than with diet alone. We're not just changing food intake, we're reprogramming the brain. Now let's talk money. 
There's no denying that these drugs are expensive, but competition changes everything. When a new, more powerful drug enters the space, it applies downward pressure on existing medications. Think semaglutide, terzipatide, now retitrutide. So what happens next? Insurance coverage expands, prices begin to drop, and patient access improves. The more tools we have, the more leverage we get, not just for prescribers, but for the public. Now, before we all start Googling where to get retitrutide, a quick but important reality check. As of right now, retitrutide is not FDA approved. It's still in phase three clinical trials and it's tightly regulated. This means you can't get it from compounding pharmacies, online clinics, or international pharmacies, at least not legally or safely. There are black market versions floating around, but using unregulated red or true type products could be extremely dangerous and frankly, not worth the risk. The good news? If the trials stay on track, FDA approval could come as soon as 2026. Until then, patience is the name of the game. Let's think about a hypothetical patient. We'll call her Angela. She's 52, pre-diabetic, has fatty liver, and carries about 40 extra pounds she struggled with for years. She starts retitrutide. Within six to 12 months, she loses 22% of her body weight, her liver enzymes normalize, her insulin resistance plummets, she sleeps better, walks farther, and feels like herself again. This isn't just symptom management, it's reversing disease at its root. So what are the final takeaways? First, retitrutide has triple hormone action, GLP-1, GIP, and glucagon. It's best in class for weight loss at approximately 25%. It targets inflammation, insulin resistance, and liver fat. It could reset metabolic set points, and it may also help to reshape the drug pricing landscape. Retitrutide isn't just another weight loss drug. It may be a metabolic reset button. Yes, we're still in phase three clinical trials, and no, we're not writing prescriptions tomorrow. But if the data holds, this could represent one of the biggest leaps forward in metabolic and longevity medicine we've ever seen. I hope you found this content helpful, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.